So uh, let, let's start with the, with the question. Let's say uh, first hello, good morning. Uh, I see the crowd is a little less, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, uh, I hope they, they'll come back uh, later on. All right. I don't, uh, I don't hear you. Say it louder, louder. Yes. The okay. Yes. The velocity when we when we determine the transfer function, we have to take the velocity somewhere. So we, we choose a good point which describes the velocity disturbance. So we, we, we take the velocity at a, at a given point. So the velocity can be measured either uh, with the LDV, uh, a laser Doppler velocimetry, or we can measure that using the two microphone. This is a good method because many times you are not able to use LDV, but if you can place two microphones upstream of the place where you need the velocity, you can get that velocity using the technique I described previously, yes. And the heat release is measured globally. We, we just integrate uh, all the uh, intensity coming from the flame uh, using a photomultiplier and we get the, uh, uh, we, we get the, the heat release, yes. Yes, the transfer function is obtained uh, using these two uh, uh, quantities. Uh, on one side, the relative fluctuation in heat release, and on the other side, the relative fluctuation in velocity. So uh, this is what I've written here. You see the, the definition that we've been using is this. And, uh, and of course, we have a transfer function also for the equivalence ratio fluctuation. This one is for the velocity, but we have the same for the equivalence ratio. And uh, in practice, uh, this is the best technique to, to obtain uh, this transfer function is to use a result from uh, uh, spectral analysis, which tells you that the transfer function is obtained by taking the cross spectral density between input and output and divide by the power spectral density of the input. Uh, this gives you a, a very good um, value for the... Uh, <coughs> so if you want to be sure that it, uh, that it gives a good value, you also need to look at the, um, at the um, coherence function. The coherence function... Uh, let's say the coherence, for example, sigma is equal to Sxy square divided by Sxx Syy. And uh, this coherence function has the property of being between 0 and 1. So uh, if you plot here the frequency and uh, you, you, you make a an experiment at a given frequency f0, typically what you will have is a coherence function which will be not very large here, and then it will go to nearly 1 and be like that. This is the, a good situation when, when, you, when you have a good coherence here, it means that the signal coming out at the output is in coherence with the signal with the input, and uh, this is the typical coherence function that you get. So you can always look at, and, uh, and you know that this is between 1 and 0. It's always above 0 and it's, it's below 1. The maximum coherence is 1. For example, if I put a microphone here and I have my, uh, another microphone here, these two signals will be coherent. There will be just a delay, but basically you will be a coherence of one. 
So uh, that, that helps you say, well, uh, what I'm measuring here is, is quite good. Uh, I don't know why it's ringing like that. It's, uh, perhaps we should just, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, you see this, uh, these loops uh, occur in acoustics. Uh, yesterday, some, somebody was there and was uh, saying something, and he couldn't because there was, a, there was uh, just a feedback loop. And here, the, there is a little bit of feedback, just a, just a very little. Uh, generally, what, what we do is we reduce the gain. So this is what we are going to do to control flames. Try to reduce the gain. Or try to change the, uh, that, that's good, I think. Is it? Did you do something? Yes, yeah, better. it's better. Yeah, yeah, looks, looks okay. All right. Um, let me now uh, go on. What we are going to do now is introduce this concept of um, describing function. So uh, what we've done up to now is to use transfer functions, uh, very much like what we do in controls. And, uh, but this is good in the linear, when you have small perturbations. However, in combustion, when you have combustion instabilities, the perturbations may reach high levels. You may have a large level of uh, oscillation, and in addition, you, have, you may have a limit cycle. The limit cycle is the place where you, you get to a, a constant value for this. This is, a, uh, this is actually a, a, a real signal. So you see the pressure P uh, starts growing here. This is linear. This is the linear regime, small perturbation, and then you get to the limit cycle. And we would like to, to know more about these limit cycles. And um, now this, the idea is very simple. Again, it comes from controls. Instead of uh, having a, a uh, transfer function, we represent the system with what we call a describing function. That is, we are going to use the input Amplitude, this is the amplitude of the input. And consider that this function, this is u prime here, or v prime, you, you can call it uh, how, you, how you like, q dot prime. And so the, uh, the describing function will be a function of frequency as well as amplitude of the input. So there is a very small change here. You consider transfer functions, but you, you determine the transfer functions for various levels of amplitude. So you have a family of transfer functions. So this is called the describing function because it, it describes the system at various levels of input. And, uh, and this was, first of all, it's used in controls to, uh, to represent nonlinear systems. This is one easy way to represent nonlinear systems. Uh, it was used by Ann Dowling uh, in a paper. This is a theoretical paper where she was looking at the kinematics of a flame in a duct. And, uh, and to represent that, she used this concept of uh, describing function. And, uh, and we used it in, uh, this is uh, the paper that we, we started uh, on this topic. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a, a very nice demonstration of what you can do with describing function. It wasn't easy to get this paper in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. The reviewer was saying, one of the reviewers was saying, this paper will be of no interest to the community. So it shouldn't be published. <laughs> when you look back and you know, look at the number of citations, this is the best paper, the second best paper of the Journal of Fluid Mechanics in the year 2008. So it was of no interest to the community, but it has the highest 
uh, citation level. So you see <laughs> what happens to citations. So no, the, uh, we were very happy with that. I think uh, you will see that uh, this concept really brings a lot of uh, understanding of what goes on. So, uh, so again, uh, you see uh, the transfer function is linear here. The describing function allows you to, to do nonlinear. Uh, for example, to calculate, to determine this limit cycle. Um, so, what is the experiment? At that time, we were interested in, uh, in the um, oscillations that takes place when you have a, a matrix uh, burner. You see, you have this uh, sort of matrix of little flames, and uh, the flames are sitting here. Uh, and what we did was to have some, something which would look like a trombone. You know, the trombone has a, a variable uh, manifold. And this is what we have here. We have a piston. In fact, we inject the air and propane or air and methane through these holes. And we form the flames on this. And so we can vary the length L. Uh, we keep the equivalence ratio at a given value. We have a, a given power, which is reasonable here. And we can change L from 90 millimeters to 750 millimeters. It's interesting always to be able to change either a parameter or the geometry, uh, not to be fixed. You know, you, you don't want to be fixed parameters. You, you want to have this possibility. For example, for swelling flames, we developed a device where you could change the swell number. By, by changing the angle of the sweller, you can change the swell number. And uh, it's always useful to have uh, uh, parameters that you can change. In a more recent paper in, that we did uh, at the last symposium, we were changing the pressure uh, loss across the injector. This is, of course, a design parameter. Uh, what is the effect of the pressure loss on uh, instability? You want to change the, the pressure loss, but you keep the other parameters constant. So it's not so easy, but you can. So here, the adjustable uh, parameter is L. So let, let's see what happens. This is a film. So when the system is stable, there is some sound, but not much. Let me show you the sound here. It was amplified by the loop here. Yes. Is that a flat sound or is it self-excited? It's self-excited. There is no loudspeaker here. You just adjust the, uh, the piston position and you have a mode which is resonating. So this is a, an open flame, but it has this back resonance. And this happens in uh, uh, process heaters. You, we, were, uh, we became interested in this because a company was telling us we have a problem. We don't know how to get rid of this oscillation. And, uh, and so uh, we, we developed a, a laboratory scale experiment. First of all, we worked on the, on the real device. I think it's still ringing, yeah. To the other mic. Anyway, this, this gives you examples of what uh, acoustic feedback uh, gives you. You know, all the, uh, this uh, Larsen phenomena are exactly what we have. We don't have combustion here, but the loop is here and, and it produces this feedback. So, um, what is the, the process uh, behind this? Uh, the process is that the flames uh, in fact, let, let's see that again. 
you see uh, uh, under this uh, coupling with the acoustic mode, the flames have this motion. So they, uh, they are uh, constantly oscillating cyclically. They are very small, they are very large, you see, and there is a, a pulse which is produced because uh, some, uh, some material is shed, uh, it's unreacted, it reacts, produces a pressure pulse, and the cycle is repeated. Uh, and uh, if you look at the, uh, the situation here, you can see the pressure. Initially, we, we stop the, the system and the pressure grows and gets to a limit cycle here. The heat release, this is the initial uh, ignition of heat release and little by little, you get again also to a limit cycle here and the flow velocity gets to a limit cycle as well. And uh, there are some famous uh, theorems about limit cycles. Uh, one mathematician, a very great mathematician uh, who worked on dynamical systems uh, is Henri Poincaré. Uh, Henri Poincaré uh, in, uh, in the 1900s, so he was uh, working uh, not at all on combustion, but on limit cycles, on dynamical systems for, he did a lot of work. He actually even was almost at the point where he could do the relativity theory. Uh, he was very close to doing that uh, at the same time as Einstein did it. But Einstein did it first, so that's it. <laughs> and so uh, Henri Poincaré has worked on these uh, limit cycles. And in fact, one of his houses is very close to mine where I live. You know, it just uh, so happens I can go and see the, the house of Poincaré. All right, so wh what happens here? Uh, you have U prime velocities which are produced by this resonance, uh, they give you uh, Q prime. So Q prime is the, the heat release. This Q prime produces P prime using the wave equation and, uh, and this is the, the source term to the wave equation. So you have P prime. And P prime brings back uh, into the, uh, feeds energy into this mode and this mode produces U prime and this is the cycle that we have here. Now, when we measure the, the describing function, this is what we get. You see the, the gain here changes as we increase the, the velocity uh, level, the gain reduces. And you see the band uh, of, uh, uh, of, of uh, where the, the flame is, uh, is, uh, is susceptible to instabilities diminishes, and you see also that the phase is changing. This is the phase of the, the system at low amplitudes, and as you increase in amplitude, you get a phase like that. So you have a change in the gain and in the phase as a function of U prime. So, so the amplitude is important. Uh, if you are at low amplitude, you have this curve here, if you are at high amplitude, you have that curve. And the same here, you, you start with a low right here and you get to that point. So the process uh, changes as the amplitude is, uh, is uh, increasing. What is the result of that? Well, uh, this is how it looks in a, in a three-dimensional plot. We plot here the frequency, zero frequency here and we increase the frequency and we plot here the amplitude. You see as the amplitude is increasing, the gain is, uh, takes this shape here. There is some extrapolation done here. We, we cannot reach very, very high amplitude, so we do some extrapolation. We do interpolation here and extrapolation. And this is the phase uh, plotted as a function of frequency on one side and amplitude on the other side here. All right, so now what, uh, what will be the result of that? Now, we are interested in the, you remember that the pressure is proportional to the e to the i omega t. Omega is composed of a real part and an imaginary part, omega i. 
And if we put that into this expression, this is proportional to e to the minus i omega rt. So this is the oscillation. And then we have here a term omega i t. So if omega i is positive, uh, this is gross. If it becomes zero, this is neutral. And if it's negative, it's damped. And, uh, and now, the, uh, when we solve this, uh, these problems, these instability problems, we've seen that already. We know that, um, in general, uh, we, uh, we, we obtain the dispersion relation. So uh, the dispersion relation which tell us what, what happens to omega. When we are in the linear, when we use linear concepts, this dispersion relation essentially depends on omega. And we've solved something like that, uh, not yesterday, but the day before. Yeah, yesterday, uh, we, we did something like that. So we looked at the roots of this uh, relation. And uh, from these roots, we were able to say it's growing, it's neutral, it's decaying. What happens when we have now uh, a, uh, a describing function? Well, this, uh, this relation will become uh, a function not only of omega, but also of the level u prime. You see, this is the main change, because when, when you write this uh, dispersion relation, it will become a function of the amplitude of the input. And this is what happens. You, you see, now you have, a, instead of having a simply a function of omega, you have a function of omega and u prime. And so the growth rate now depends on u prime over u bar. And, uh, and as a consequence, the frequency of this oscillation will depend on u prime over u bar. And you will have uh, situations like that. For example, omega i will be, so omega is, is, uh, is given here in terms of radians per second. So omega i here is uh, fairly high and at a given, and then uh, starts diminishing. And at a point it goes to zero and this will be the limit cycle. And uh, the, at the limit cycle, the frequency will be this one. It will start here and go down there. And if we plot that in terms of frequency on one side and, uh, and growth rate, this is what happens. We start at that point, very close to this, for example, this 3C over 4L mode, three quarter wave mode. And, uh, and then we, we go down to the limit cycle when omega i is equal to zero. So it's a method to get the limit cycle amplitude. The limit cycle amplitude will be the value at which omega i goes to zero. In fact, this, this, system, this system here is very, has a very weak uh, uh, damping, so we go to zero. If, if there is damping, then we have not to go to zero, but to go to the value of the damping. At that point, you get the limit cycle. When, when the driving is equal to the damping, then you are at the limit cycle. So basically, the, uh, what we can try to see is, uh, is, is, are these predictions correct? How, do, how did we get them? Well, we, we wrote the dispersion relation. It is a function now of u prime, and, uh, and we can plot trajectories. So this is a, what we call type one trajectory, because you start unstable, and you get to a limit cycle. However, there are also a different kind, there is a different kind of uh, trajectory. You start stable, so small perturbations here are stable because the damp this is negative, you, are in, uh, uh, you have a negative value of omega i. And then 
as you move the, the, the level of oscillation, suddenly you get to a point where omega i starts being positive. So if you have a, a strong perturbation, you can get to this point, and from there on, you will move and get to a limit cycle there. So, and at the same time, you see you can calculate the frequency. Of course, this frequency will not be seen here, but you start seeing it at that point, and you have a shift in frequency, which depends also on u prime. And this is what happens here. The frequency starts at that point. Um, yes, and then you move right here, and you get to the limit cycle here. So you have a shift in frequency, and at the same time, you, you start with the, at that point, you start growing, and then you get to the limit cycle. So, uh, of course, this, uh, these calculations are very interesting because you see that uh, it's now possible to understand some of, the, of what you see in, in practice in, in experiments. And uh, actually, it's even more um, valuable because it is now possible to, uh, to plot something like that. What you, what you do here is you, you change the, the size of, this, uh, uh, of the upstream manifold. You, you, you change L, you increase L, and you calculate all the values of the, uh, of the growth rates, and you, you plot the growth rate for the, different, uh, for the different modes that are available, quarter wave, three quarter wave, five quarter wave. So the first is the quarter wave. So you plot this here. Uh, you plot the three quarter wave. And uh, uh, what, what comes out is that you may have some three quarter wave mode here for this short length. And they may coexist with the, first, f with the quarter wave. And then you, you plot the three quarter wave here. And again, uh, there is a whole region here where you may have the five quarter wave or the three quarter wave. So there is a possibility now of mode switching. You may go from one mode to the other for the same condition. Uh, what, for the moment, I haven't exploited that. But what you see here is that uh, you may have that poss possibility. If you look at the uh, slices here, what you see is, for example, here, you, you would have a, uh, at very small perturbations. You, you have the three-quarter wave mode appearing and then completely disappearing here. So you, you get a limit cycle at that point. If you have a perturbation here, you may jump to this one, and this will take you at that point. So suppose you, you operate at that point, you, you get the three-quarter wave mode at this point, and you make a perturbation, and this will jump here. And if you are at this point, uh, you start like here, it's growing, so the, the, uh, the omega i is growing here, and as you go up to this level, you get the limit cycle. And in this case, if you are here at that position, you, you start here, and then you, you continue on the five-quarter wave, and suddenly you are in a place where the the uh, growth rate is bigger for the three-quarter wave. So this will switch to the three-quarter wave, and then you will you'll, you'll be here with the three-quarter wave. So you start with a, a given perturbation, five-quarter wave, uh, low frequency, and you get to, the, you, you get to this uh, higher frequency here. So, uh, so uh, this is calculations. This is based on a model of what, I, of what I've shown, uh, including a, uh, a describing function that we measured. And, uh, and the question is, uh, are these predictions, in fact, uh, obtained uh, in practice? And they are. What is surprising is that, for example, we, we were very excited about that point. So we went in the lab and did the experiment, and we had that. Exactly. It's amazing. It's, uh, yeah. So, so uh, uh, there is no recommendation. It's just it allows you to predict 
what, what will be seen. So what you need is, of course, you need to put more damping. We will lo uh, look at that later. But uh, basically, uh, you want first to understand what goes on. Why is there mode switching? Why do you trigger something? Uh, what happens when you have a, you, you, you are in a, in a situation like that and suddenly the system jumps to that point? Why? And now you have that view. Uh, uh, if you were just doing uh, transfer functions, you would see just the beginning here. You would not see what happens here. All of that is due to the fact that you have a dependence on the amplitude. It tells you much more of the story. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it, it's an enormous uh, uh, amount of additional information. So uh, you see, for example, uh, you take uh, this situation here and uh, we predict a frequency shift so you, you go from 530 down to about 500 hertz at the limit cycle. And you, you ask, is, it, is that indeed uh, true? And this is verified. Here you have a, uh, the experiment. So I, I don't remember exactly what, what is the, the length of the pipe, but you start here. At a slightly, you cannot see it by, by, by the eye. You cannot see that the frequency here is a little higher than there. But you do, uh, the, the frequency here is at 530, and then you go down and you, you finally reach 500 hertz. And uh, if you do a spectral analysis of this signal, so now you have to do a, a, a moving spectral analysis. You analyze the signal uh, at various positions here. And you see that the, the frequency goes from 530 to 500 here. So definitely, you have this uh, match between the frequency shift and, uh, and what you actually see here. Uh, what is also interesting is, is that uh, the system has hysteresis. If you, if you change the length in this direction, it will give a certain response. If you change it in the other direction, the response will be different. For example, start with a very small uh, uh, duct. Uh, I think, it, uh, yeah, this is 0.1. So you, you start with 10 centimeters as a duct, and what you see immediately is that you get the quarter wave mode up to this point. Then the, there is a region where you have nothing. So the, it's, it's stable, but on a very small uh, region. And then you start with the three quarter wave mode down to here. You see that it fits pr pretty well. The, the level of oscillation is of the same order. And then you, you get to the five quarter wave mode here. So you move from this one to this one and to that one. If you start with a big length of 0.7 meters, you start first with the five quarter wave, then you shift to the three quarter wave, then you fall down here, nothing happens, and then you start with the, with the you are still on the five quarter wave, uh, on the three quarter wave, and then finally you get to the quarter wave. So you see there is a difference between if you are doing this in this direction or if you change the length in this direction. And you can predict that more or less. You, you see uh, uh, it, there is always a little bit of, uh, it's not perfect. The match is not perfect, but it gives, uh, it gives the trend. And it gives also the trend in terms of frequencies. These are the predicted frequencies and you, have, you, you do have the, the predicted frequencies. So here the frequency is very high, and then you move to a lower frequency here. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, interesting is to look at, at this uh, case. So you have a, uh, we, uh, we go from, uh, from this situation, to that one. 
So, so this was done just by perturbing the system. Everything is kept constant. You start with a mode, you blow on it, and uh, it goes to the different mode. So you have this switching. This is a position where you, you could have the two modes and you go from one to the other by just uh, doing a perturbation. Uh, here we blew on the flame just uh, with some air and you get to a, a different mode. You see the mode switching takes place when combustion is perturbed by, but of course, uh, to have mode switching, you need to have the possibility of these two modes. And this is predicted. This is predicted using this describing function. Uh, and uh, of course, in this case, the, the flames were not confined, but uh, that was a good uh, condition to actually put a, uh, a chamber uh, made of quartz and uh, have this operate more or less like a real combustor. You have a, an upstream plenum, you have the injector, these multiple flames, they are very easy to, to have. And then you have this, uh, this combustor and you can look at, uh, at what happens here using, uh, uh, using uh, a photomultiplier. What you see here is a waveguide microphone. You see it's a, uh, it's a system allowing you to, to plug in a microphone on the chamber. And, uh, and the microphone is, uh, is, uh, is uh, mounted uh, on a waveguide. The situation is as follows. You, you have a, a waveguide. You place the microphone at this point right here. And, uh, and this can be placed in a hot place. You, you may have combustion here. Uh, and this is terminated with a lot of, uh, you, you, go, you have a channel which makes about 20 meters of piping and it's terminated here. This is a, a good way to, you, you cannot put the microphone directly on the chamber. It's, uh, or you have to cool it and it's not very easy. These microphones are very, are very fragile and so this is a mounting. So of course, when you have a, a certain distance here, let's say D, uh, you have to account for the delay tau, which is equal to D over C. So you have to know the, the, the temperature in this region and uh, you account for that delay and you have a, uh, this is a, a reasonable way of placing microphones on combustion chambers. So you can actually measure the pressure field in the chamber using this device. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about results obtained in this new configuration. So, so this work is, uh, a, uh, is a result of uh, the work of uh, Frédéric Boudy. He, he's now uh, an engineer at uh, Alstom, General Electric. Uh, and uh, so again, uh, we are interested in this loop. Uh, we know that uh, uh, we have uh, oscillations which may not be just uh, as simple as uh, what I've shown up to now. Uh, one of the methods to uh, handle these oscillations, I told you, is to do expansion on the normal modes. It's very interesting also to work with the concepts of transfer functions uh, of this kind. Uh, it is, uh, we, we've seen that uh, it is possible to make a linear treatment using uh, uh, the wave equation, using uh, transfer functions. And it's possible to also work with nonlinear concepts uh, based on the describing function. 
the, the nonlinear, the main nonlinearity is associated with the flame. Uh, there is also nonlinearity associated with acoustics. If the acoustics is very strong, uh, you cannot neglect the terms that we neglected, and so you have some nonlinear acoustics. And this has been extensively investigated by uh, Fred Kulik and his colleagues and, and, uh, and students. Now, uh, what we want is to do that, uh, develop this nonlinear stability analysis, uh, show how to anticipate nonlinear phenomena, analyze limitations of the S. Now, this FDF framework uh, has also limitations. It doesn't solve everything, so you cannot expect to uh, finally solve all the problems uh, like that. You always have new problems and difficulties, and especially when, when you have limit cycles which are uh, themselves unstable. Uh, you may have uh, situations where you have multiple fr uh, frequencies or where you have uh, pulsations and uh, wh what you see in, in practice is more complicated than the very simple situations that I have uh, portrayed. So uh, what is the experimental configuration? It's this one, but now we have the manifold, the feeding manifold, the perforated plate, and we have a chamber. This is the, the configuration. The waveguide microphone is sitting here. There is a hot wire also. It's on the upstream side, so it doesn't, it's not exposed to, to, the, um, to the heat. Uh, the confinement tube is made of quartz. Uh, this is the feeding manifold, and you can move this piston. And uh, in fact, air and methane are injected through the piston here. Uh, like that, you always have the injection. If you were placing the injection somewhere, uh, if you change the piston and if it's above the injection, it won't work. So by injecting through the piston, it was the best, uh, the best uh, design. Here you see the, uh, the matrix. Uh, this is the piston. Uh, we, we changed also, we, we played with the, the size of the, the orifices and the, the matrix itself uh, just to see how these parameters uh, modify the oscillations, how that works. Uh, uh, you, uh, as soon as you have uh, geometrical parameters, it's important to change them. Uh, so I've shown these signals already. Uh, this is typically what we see under uh, instability situations. You have this waveguide mi microphone here, which is connected to the chamber. And the hot wire is right here. And, uh, and you have other microphones that you can place on this uh, manifold. And so uh, this is what we get. We get this cycle. Uh, it's also true for a confined flame. You see uh, point 0.1 or uh, the confinement tube is 10 centimeters while the feeding manifold is 0.29 meters. And uh, we, we've seen, let, let's see that. So this is the stable regime, and then we, we can uh, get to the unstable. We, we've seen that already. Yeah, we've, saw, we've seen that before. All right, so uh, what we have here is a dynamics which is fairly similar now we have this L2 and L1. Uh, of course, what we do is we vary L1 here, but we have various sizes of L2. And, um, and you see here, we have the instability. There is a stable region, which is right here, and it goes back to instability here. So basically, we start with a stable, at the, uh, with unstable oscillation here, uh, we go to something st uh, stable, and we go back to something unstable. And these are the, the acoustic modes. So uh, always the frequency is not far from the acoustic modes. It's not exactly equal to, the, to that of the acoustic mode because combustion is there, so uh, the frequency is, is modified. 
and uh, this is um, this is the pressure level outside the confinement tube. There is a microphone M1 which is located not far from the system, and you see 120 decibels here. Uh, there is noise because the combustion across this uh, matrix burner uh, makes noise. And then uh, again, this, this is an oscillation here. So the oscillation frequencies at limit cycle lie close to, but do not always uh, match the eigenmodes of the combustor. So it's important to calculate the eigenmodes, but, uh, but you see that uh, the, the frequency is not quite that of the eigenmodes. It's close to that. Uh, if we now change uh, we, we move L1, so we get this situation here. Uh, we, we have a, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's the same, sorry. Yeah, in addition, there is, a, <laughs> there is something wrong here in, in, in the slides. All right, so um, we get, this, this is a, um, Again, we are uh, on, on this first mode and then we get to the second mode, yeah. There is a repetition here. So now let's see what happens when we go from L2 is equal to 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters to 30 centimeters. What we see is that uh, this was for 10 centimeters. At 20 centimeters, we are like that. And at 30 centimeters, there is no more region of stability. Uh, for this uh, system here, it's unstable for all the manifolds. You start having, uh, the chamber is uh, sufficiently long and the whole thing is unstable. The damping is, is low in this case, so you have uh, essentially something unstable. It shifts the frequency, the, the mode is, uh, is shifting. As you increase the length, you change modes right here and you, you get closer to this uh, to the second mode. This is the first mode, the second mode, the third mode. Uh, now, uh, again, uh, if, we, if we put no flame, that is, if uh, there is no combustion, we can study just purely the system, uh, purely acoustically, just to, to see what are the modes. And so what we solve is a uh, the transfer function or the describing function is equal to zero. So we get the acoustic modes, the mobile structure, but no information on unstable modes. Then we put a, uh, a transfer function, f of omega, then we get initial oscillation frequencies and the exponential growth, but no information on the limit cycle and very limited information on the prediction of uh, 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 unstable modes, what, what, what happens to these modes. And if we use the describing function, we get the frequencies, the growth rate evolution, limit cycle, the frequency shift, the hysteresis, the mode switching, the triggering. Triggering is when you have something stable and suddenly you, you perturb that and it becomes unstable. So it's triggering. It's, uh, it, it, it's there. Uh, so uh, such tests are very important. For example, in rocket engines, uh, to verify that they are stable, not only we have to verify that under normal conditions everything's fine, but we put small bombs, yes, bombs, and they explode, make a big pulse, and if the system remains stable, then it's, it's fine. So uh, you, uh, this is to, to avoid any possibility of triggering. So how does the analysis go? For example, if we do the acoustic analysis, we take this cavity, we have a second cavity here, uh, two temperatures, uh, two uh, densities, two sound speeds, uh, two values of the um, wave number, K1 and K2, and you have a, a system like that. You, you assume that you have waves here, you, you have the boundary conditions. For example, this is open, so the pressure is zero. Uh, here it's closed, so the velocity is equal to zero. Uh, you have the matching conditions because you change the surface here. So S2 times the U prime two is equal to S1 times U prime one. And the pressure is, uh, 
is continuous across that uh, uh, region. And so you have a matrix here. Uh, this is a, a system. Uh, it has, uh, it's a homogeneous linear system. And you can get the value of omega. So omega is a real number. You get, get the frequencies, the modes, the mode structures in this case. You have this system M of omega times x, x being this vector. So that's, that's the acoustic analysis. You can do also this acoustic analysis using uh, COMSOL. If the geometry is a little more complex, you just use COMSOL. COMSOL or any other solver which allows you to, to calculate the Helmholtz equation for a given geometry. Uh, and then you, you get the first mode, you get the second mode and the third mode. And we've seen that there is a difference uh, between the frequencies that are observed and the frequencies that are calculated. But this gives you already a good idea of what, uh, of what the frequencies could be. So this is typically what now we, we can do on a routine basis. You, you look for the, the frequencies and in fact you can uh, you can do the calculations for all these uh, uh, feeding manifold uh, values. So you get, you get the frequencies as they change with the, the lengths of the manifold. The second uh, situation is that we, we take a transfer function. So we consider just g here and, and phi. This is a measured transfer function for these flames. Once we, we have that, we plug that into the acoustic analysis, uh, and uh, the objective is to obtain omega i. So if omega i is greater than zero, it may be unstable if the damping rate is very low. And uh, how do we measure the transfer function? Well, it's the, always the same system. You have the loudspeaker, the flames here. You put a photomultiplier. You assume that the uh, intensity is proportional to the heat release. So you get the, uh, the relative heat release, you get the relative velocity fluctuation, and you can get the gain here and the phase here. If you change, for example, the size of the orifices, you, you have a different gain, you have a different phase, and you can, of course, tailor your transfer function uh, to get instability or to avoid instability. You want to actually bring the gain to a lower value and, and the phase, uh, you have to, to be careful. There are certain bands which may be uh, unstable and if the gain is sufficient there, you may get that instability. If the gain is not sufficient, you may not. Uh, and, and this is actually what happens when we use this linear analysis. It is possible to actually predict some of the uh, uh, instability uh, regions. Uh, for example, this is for orifices which are of one millimeter and this is for 1.5. And definitely you see that the phase is very different and so you expect frequencies which will be very different. So, uh, and indeed this is what happens here. The black dots correspond to these black things here and the, the open symbols correspond to these and, and the bands of instability are those, these bands between pi and two pi and between three pi and four pi and, and so on. And you can see that, uh, that the data that you get uh, actually corresponds, that you, you do have this rather good match between what is predicted from this linear stability analysis. So for example, this is a band of instability for, uh, for this, this size of uh, matrix. So you, you see the points are indeed in, in that band. And uh, if we look at these two bands, you, you do have this band here and something like that band right here, this one. So again, the points fall in this region. So, so basically, even the linear stability analysis is, is fine. It's, uh, in this case, uh, you can see that by changing the parameters, you change the transfer function, and uh, this is reflected uh, in, uh, in what, you, uh, what you calculate here, and what is calculated 
corresponds to the experimental values. Oscillations at uh, limit cycle almost lie within instability bands and the amplitudes of oscillations remain unknown. So now uh, we use the describing function and, and now the describing function is a function of, uh, of the level. This is, again, it, I'm repeating some of the arguments before. And, uh, and now the, both the, uh, the frequency as well as the gross rate will depend on the level. So uh, you, you can do the analysis again and uh, you see this is the work of Dowling uh, and this is the work of Nicolas Noiret and, uh, and, uh, and Frédéric Boudy is, is the work that is here. So the transfer function is just this. Here we have a describing function, which you see changes as, uh, as a function of the level of the input. How, how does one solve that? Uh, well, you do the calculations. For example, first you start with the acoustics. So this gives you the normal modes, the eigen modes. And then you start with a very low level of uh, U prime. And this, you have the transfer function here. You get the values of omega r and omega i. And then you increase the level. You get again omega r and omega i. And you increase the level and so on. And you get the trajectory. So you get this as a function of uh, the level, this as a function of the level, and this gives you this plot. The colors are not as nice as before, <laughs> but uh, you have the first mode here. Uh, the trajectory was, in this case, of this kind. You see omega i is positive and goes to zero. So when you are here, you are at the, uh, at the limit cycle. So you, you get the amplitude of the limit cycle. Uh, there are trajectories like that, where you start negative. So this is stable here, but it's not stable to perturbations. A, a strong perturbation woof, will bring you unstable, and then you will get to the limit cycle at that point. And uh, we have mode two. Uh, so it, this occurs also for the confined case. You see it's, it's very much like uh, the previous uh, situation, but now we have a confinement. And we have mode three also, which is manifested here. And, uh, and you can predict, uh, you see these are the limit cycles that you can get. These are the limit cycles. And, uh, and then you, you, you put all these calculations together and you, you may say what, what will go on. You know. Uh, for example, here, suppose you, you started here and you get here, you will go down here. And this is a region of stability. And, uh, and then you will get to this mode and you will have a limit cycle following that. And, uh, and this will go like that. And this, this is typically the, what, what is seen. You, you, can, you can fall here. Yeah, this is the other way around. We, we start from here, we go here, we, uh, we, we, we get here, and we go here. So uh, we have this mode switching possibility uh, going from a high frequency to a low frequency. We have a situation of triggering, that is, we have essentially nothing, and suddenly, because of a perturbation, we get to a, a limit cycle. Uh, and we have this, uh, the, uh, uh, th this is just an analysis of this triggering. We, you start with a high frequency, you go to a, uh, a low frequency here. Uh, you have this uh, mode two and then you, you get to mode one here. All right, perhaps let's stop at that point and we'll continue after the break. So please. Come back at uh, at eleven. <laughs>